Please note that this video contains spoilers. Captain America, the first Avenger, thoughts. Okay, so I do think that this has a little bit of the Iron Man film series issue with the villain and the good guy don't have that much interaction with each other and the fight is just really short and kind of anticlimactic. Just, yeah, you know, it's not even like Captain, like Cap wins. He just... It's just that the other guy loses, you know. If Red Skull hadn't touched the cube, there's a euphemism, it would have, you know, the fight would have gone on for longer. Granted, the fight, as it were, was kind of cool. You know, I like how they were really evenly matched. There was a little debate among me and the people I watched it with if he had actually survived that, if he had maybe been transported to, you know, Asgard, Valhalla, or if he did, you know, disintegrate like the others, you know, the people hit by the rays by that web. So I guess the way that thing just works is just limitless energy, you know, you can just use it as many times as you want and that's it. And I guess that one cube it must have been the original. So he used that to power the ship. Yeah. Okay. So, and I do believe that the cube being found by Howard somewhat leads to something in Iron Man 2. I won't give it away for those who haven't watched that yet. I thought that the whole Hydra thing really worked, you know, and you got to really fear Hydra and the whole thing, you know, the, the cyanide capsules, you know, you really, that that's such a typical Hydra thing, you know, the whole self-sacrifice for, you know, the glory of the organization. I liked the... The Nordic mythology, Norse mythology, there at the very beginning, one could say that this actually, as far as narration goes, delivers more, you know, exposition about, you know, Norse mythology than the actual movie Thor, but I'd like to think I'm above that. One of my friends pointed out that it's kind of fun, funny, that Hugo Weaving is still playing a smith, you know, it's, it's, it's with a D this time, Schmidt, but it's still, you know, towards that. I thought it was really cool with, you know, the, the jet there near the end, with, you know, he jumps on one of the bombs, and, you know, and that, that sort of idea of, you know, it's like a kamikaze kind of bomb. You know, they're just supposed to fly this extremely powerful bomb. Sure hope that first one didn't hit anyone. You know, it's it just, he just sent it out there, you know, hoping that no major city was under there. That's a pretty big chance to run, but okay, risk to run. You know, and, you know, he flies it back up into the ship and, you know, he walks toward the throne and you, you just, you know that Red Skull's not in the throne, you know, he's somewhere else and Cap knows it too, but he's still, and, you know, I like how it actually fits in all the cliches of just the American action movie, you know, the, you know, they even managed to fit in a misunderstanding between him and the love interest and, you know, Gotta love how she, you know, afterwards, she's just like, okay, well, let's see if this shield is really bullet resistant and just, you know, empties a clip into it. That's, yeah. I quite like the moral. The whole thing of, you know, that he, it wasn't about 
killing the bad guys. It wasn't about us versus them. It was about, you know, getting to getting back to peace, you know, and actually, you know, he was t t courageous, you know, with the, you know, throwing himself on the grenade and the whole thing. You know, that's such an iconic, idealistic idea. I'm not sure many people have actually done it, but it's a nice thought, isn't it? And, you know, the whole... And the, I, I love near the end where it's clear that Cap Captain America has inspired people. You know, he might be gone for 70 years, but he's inspired you know, the, the child with the little trash can lid with the flag painted on it. Or the colors and, you know, the basic symbol. And the whole, you know, the montage with where they do turn him into just a spokesperson, you know, just, you know, buy, you know, you know the scrap metal and the buy war bonds and that whole thing, you know, which actually did take place, you know, they tried to raise money for, you know, the war effort. And I love that, you know, part of the film is just him rescuing prisoners. You know, that it's not, you know, oh, I'm going to go out there and just kill a bunch of them. You know, he was rescuing people. He was rescuing American prisoners, you know, POWs. And, you know, he makes a team out of them. And I thought the team was quite entertaining. And it just, it also just makes more sense that he'd actually managed to, and I think that might also be how it started out in the comics, that he had a team of, you know, American military, or not had a team necessarily, but he worked with the American military, you know, he didn't just go at it alone, you know, it was a kind of, you know, the troops are part of winning this war kind of thing. I like that he's not, you know, he's not a rocket scientist, but he's also not stupid, you know, Captain America himself. You know, there at the end, where he does realize that that's not the real, you know, he's not really in 1941 anymore, or 1942, whatever, because he already you know, he actually watched that game, so he knows it's not current. And by the way, I do, you know, anyone watching this, stay after, I hope you stayed after the credits, because if you're watching this, you probably have already watched the movie. It's worth it. There's a teaser for the Avengers movie. It's not a lot, but it's just, the, the imagery is just so evocative that it doesn't need to be a lot. The scene itself, after the end credits, is just really, really short and doesn't do that much, you know. But it is worth watching. It's definitely worth staying from the after the credits for. I like the whole bit with his friend, you know, that you can just tell they respect each other and they like each other. And, you know, he rescues him, and then he becomes part of the team. And then he dies. And it's that sort of, you know, now Captain really has reason for... And, you know, again, the, the American action movie cliché. And, you know, you have the turncoat. And it was nicely enough established with the... You know, because it's not like he necessarily hates what you know, Johan is doing. I don't think any any parent should name their child Johan. I think it just, you grow up and you want to take over the world, you know. Just imagine the childhood Johan had. I like that the film, okay, to finish off the Dr. Sola thought, you know, you could kind of tell he wasn't fanatical about it, like the others were. You know, the Hydra members, they were just fanatics. He was just kind of, oh, yeah, yeah, right, that, you know. He did the Hail Hydra bit, but it was like, you know, 
it was like an aloha lo with, you know, what's his name, Hans or something like that. You know, the, the German officer who's always like, just at the very end going along with the whole Heil Hitler thing. Yeah, I like that it was, some would call it cheesily, against, you know, racism and sort of, you know, you have the thing of, you know, oh, there's an Asian that man here, surely he's not American, we're just rescuing everybody, aren't we? And he's like, dude, I'm just as American as you are, you know, is the, the whole thing of, you know, America is based on immigration, so the fact that, you know, the skin color isn't entirely white or ethnicity or whatever, that doesn't mean that they're not American. And that doesn't mean they're not going to fight for America. And I like that it doesn't say that the Germans were all evil. You know, it has the one German who did, you know, and one of the first things he says is, you know, to, to Steve, do you have a problem with the fact that I'm from Germany? You know, I, you know, do you think that just because I'm German, I must necessarily be your enemy, that I must necessarily be a Nazi? You know, it has that thing of, you know, some people really didn't agree with what Hitler was doing. And I suppose that's about what I had to say about it, so comment below. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.